Good morning, everyone. We are Holiday United Church of Christ, and I am Shesh Tipton. Um, we start all of our services by letting everyone know they're welcome. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, we welcome you here. Holiday is an open and affirming congregation and a whole earth church. So we welcome every precious soul and we worship all of God's creation. We have two other offerings after um, our worship service at 1030. Being Redeemed is our coffee time and at 11 we have a live prayer service. If you don't know exactly how to maneuver to those places on the internet, go to your tidings. Now, I will do our ringing of the bell. all please join me in the call to worship. We come to worship today with open hearts. Let us breathe the breath that refreshes and opens ourselves up to worship. We come to learn. Let us learn new things about ourselves and God. We come to be together in faith and love. Let us feel the spirit of connectedness with our community. We come to find solace and comfort. May we all feel the calming of our souls in this time together. And now I invite you to join in our opening song, which is Wade in the Water, Children. <laughs>
Good morning and welcome as we read our scripture for today. It's a difficult one, and I want us to really listen to um, what this says so that when we delve into it after the reading, that uh, you can really have a feel for the scripture. This comes from Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from a demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. The story of this woman who came to Jesus, who was not a Jew, is also told in the book of Mark. Now, Mark has a little different take on this. Uh, Jesus was tired and he went into a town and went into a home, hoping that people wouldn't know that he was there so he could get some rest. And this woman came and badgered him uh, to heal her daughter. And um, it's just interesting to see Jesus in this light as someone who is tired and doesn't want to be bothered with someone other than an Israelite. It's a story that doesn't make sense to me out of scripture because it is completely contrary to the way that Jesus normally acts. The way we see Jesus as um, taking the hand of Peter as he's uh, sinking into the ocean when Jesus is walking on water as we heard last week, or, you know, the kindness and gentleness, even the story directly after this in both Matthew and Mark um, is a story of Jesus healing the multitudes of people bringing them all of their sick and wounded and demon possessed. And Jesus has compassion for them as he does when he feeds the 5,000 or 4,000 or 3,000, depending on the story that you see. So why is this scripture part of what we see? Why, why did Matthew and Mark decide to put this story in there in the way that they did? It's a curious thing, and I think that uh, in you know when I talked about this in my seminary days with my professors, there were some professors who said, "Well, maybe Jesus was teaching the woman a lesson or teaching the disciples a lesson." What do you think? Do you think that Jesus was teaching a lesson here? Do you think he was human and he was really tired and he had a job to do? Do we ever feel like that? Um, we have a job to do and we have to do that and we don't want to be bothered by anything else. We have our lives set as we like them and we don't want to be troubled by the, the woes of the world, the people who are oppressed. We don't want to do one more thing. I know I feel that way sometimes um, as a pastor or in my personal life, uh, especially at the beginning of the whole pandemic when there were so many things that were um, pulling me in into different directions and I just couldn't handle one more transition. I don't know that that's how Jesus was feeling and I, I wouldn't want to guess Jesus' emotions in here, but I would want to take a guess at what the the writers of these gospels were trying to get across and many people will say rather than we reading the scriptures into our lives that the scriptures read us and i think that this is a time when we all feel very burdened by the lives that we have and the jobs that we have and one more thing one person outside of our our um, sphere of influence that wants to get in and take a piece of us is just too much. Uh, I understand the way Jesus might have been feeling if, if we can read that into it. 
Or maybe just the way that disciples who wrote these Gospels felt, uh, thinking that there must have been a time when Jesus was exhausted, when people were asking too much of him, and who would be that person who was asking too much? An outsider. Uh, for Matthew, Matthew is trying so hard in, in his gospel to say that uh, Jesus is the Messiah that came for everyone. Mark is doing a similar thing, although Mark is trying to let us know what that good news is about Jesus. So the good news here is that Jesus did listen. And the odd thing also about Mark is that the first person that Jesus even sent out to talk about the good news that Jesus had come was someone who wasn't a Jew. It was the man who was in the um, uh, the graves who had the legion of demons, and Jesus relieved him of the legion of demons and gave him the ability to go out and tell the Gentile community about how God's mercy had been with him and that he was now free of all of the burdens of his life. So for Mark to then say that Jesus didn't care about someone who was outside of the community of Israel was a completely contrary thing to who Jesus really is. So you know, we can take this many different ways. I've heard it preached that Jesus changed his mind uh, and that God can change God's mind, that God grows like we do. For me, that's a foreign kind of way of thinking because I feel like God is a constant. God is a loving presence always. And uh, so for me, God isn't a changing evolving kind of being. God already sees everything from a love perspective. And so I have to look at this scripture and say, what is this teaching me? How am I feeling about the way Jesus treated this woman? And how am I feeling in my life about the things that try to enter my life that also need looking after, even when I'm tired? Maybe uh, I encounter someone hurt along the road. They're not part of our community of faith. They're not part of my family. And yet there's something that nags at me that says, you must take the time and be that person of love in the world, even to people that you don't know. Um, Jesus relents in the end and he relents because of this woman's tenacity, her ability to continue to ask for what she needs. I believe that our whole sense of being right now is being uprooted and we are having to look at the Gentiles in our lives, the people who are not part of our faith community, the people of color, the people um, who are disabled, the LGBT community, all of these communities that are considered less than, as this woman was, um, I can hardly imagine that Jesus believed that she was less than. I don't think that that was what Jesus was saying. In fact, the story just prior to this, Jesus is saying that the only thing that makes you unclean as a human are the things that are inside your heart. So Jesus is mirroring this idea that um, we need to pay attention to those nagging influences, those people who deserve healing and loving just as our community does. The Bible is reading us. The Bible is saying, no matter how tired you are, when there is something important that is nagging at you, there, Jesus will come out and take care of that and love that person or whatever is going on. So it is in love that we go forward even when we're tired um, to do the things that need to be done, just as Jesus did. Um, I think 
these passages that are so difficult um, make us wonder what is it that scripture does for us and why are we so believing in the way of Jesus when something like this comes up and I think it's those stunning moments that teach us something so deeply about ourselves. Um, Alex and I went on a mission trip to Russia and one of the things that we did was uh, after we were finished is we took the whole group into London for a couple of days on our way home and we went to Speaker's Corner where there were many people who were on their soapboxes talking about what they thought about God and there were Muslim people who were berating the Bible and saying well look at these things that are in your Bible these cruel and horrible things that um, that they assumed that God had done and it made me really think about um, how is it that we talk about these really difficult passages in the Bible the the one that I particularly remember from that time was um, a young man who was talking about the psalm where uh, he, there is a piece where uh, the person who wrote the psalm was talking about throwing the babies of their enemies against the rocks. And I needed to delve in that, into that for myself. And what I discovered was that it was this lament that the Israelites were feeling because those are the kinds of things that they're enemies were doing to them and that's what they wanted they wanted retribution they wanted justice but this was not what god was asking for justice uh, this was what the people who were writing the laments were asking for justice so i want us to be really careful about how we interpret and look at scripture and how we maybe um, try to put our own ideas into scripture so that we can make our seal, ourselves feel better. I believe that scripture is here to read us, to help us in our lives, to make us think, and to make us deeply love God and our neighbor, to love justice, and to do kindness, and walk humbly with God, because that is where we can have peace and where we can have understanding. So I hope that this was helpful to you. I believe that this Syrophoenician woman can teach us so much as so many communities that are thought of as less than. And we might also remember that the Jews were also being oppressed at the time. So there was this sense of status for different groups. And Jesus was saying, I'm here for the Jews and I need to do this work. And yet it was the Gentiles that he used time and again in stories to show love and compassion. So let us take this information with us and ponder it and try to figure out what is it in this scripture that helps us to breathe easy, that helps us to be more kind, that helps us to be more introspective about our lives and how we treat people. So I'm going to leave you with that and pray that this will work on your hearts and souls and minds this week and that if you have questions, if you want to have a discussion about this topic, I would be more than happy to do that. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for listening, contemplating, having ears to hear and eyes to see. Amen. Well, good morning. About uh, 40 years ago, the church I belonged to had a fellow, another person in our church, Hugh Prather, and he was a self-help guru in the 1970s and 80s and sold about 5 million books in his first book, Notes to Myself. So one Sunday, our minister David was out of town, so Hugh, well, Hugh was a lay minister. He, he did the commentary that Sunday, and I don't know what he said, commentary-wise, but I do remember how he finished up the service. He talked about a hymn that should be in everybody's songbook, everybody's head you should sing it once maybe a week maybe every day in case you really need it so i'm going to sing the song to you i'm going to prove that i can't sing a lot of people know this but <clears throat> so here here's the hymn that you really liked us to think about ready <clears throat> row 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 your boat gently down the stream merrily 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 life is but a dream now, Hugh explained this, that 
we all have our own boat and we're responsible for our boat. We're responsible for rowing that boat, guiding that boat, and taking full ownership of what we do. So in that regards, he said, <clears throat> don't let other people row your boat. It'll get you in trouble. I found that as a child because I would say something that, well, John had the cigarettes. I just took a puff. But that doesn't pass the smell test for most parents, and it didn't pass the smell test for mine. So I took responsibility and figured out, well, I guess I have to be a better person. I tried. Anyway, so don't let people row your own, row your boat. And also, don't row somebody else's boat or lots of people's boats because they'll, they'll get frustrated and you'll get frustrated. So now, And you row that boat gently down the stream. That way, if you row the wrong direction, the stream will take you down and through life where you probably should have been looking at before. And, as a benefit, you get four Marys for every three rows. You're one Mary ahead. And then life is but a dream. Thinking of Martin Luther King, I have a dream, one of his best speeches. It's his dream. I have my own dreams, you have your dreams. Verbalize your dreams. See where, see where they lead to. So thinking about the scripture, Jesus went to the north of Israel, uh, where it was an interesting area because it was full of people that worshipped idols, people that worshipped money, the merchants. The people didn't worship anything. People were just mean and nasty. And mixed in there was the Jewish congregations. They had a hard time keeping the faith with all that other stuff going on. So... Jesus says part of his, I have a dream, he went up to the uh, northern Israel to see if he could help them out, maybe. <clears throat> so, while he was there, a Canaanite woman, whose daughter was being tormented by demons, and I will say that the, in that time, Canaanite was almost a code word for undesirable person, and also they could refer to him as dogs, so... She was not one of the Israel's favorite people to start with. So she's yelling and just belly aching and just screeching at Jesus to heal her daughter. My daughter just my daughter needs to do something, do something. And he said nothing. Crickets. He didn't let her row his boat. But she did row the disciples' boat, because they got fed up with her, and then they went to Jesus and said, hey, make this woman shut up, get rid of her. And he said, I was sent here only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, she must have heard this, because she went and knelt before him and said, Lord, uh, help me. He answered, it's not fair to take the bread of the children and throw it to the dogs. She kind of probably was taken back. She said, you know, but, you know, yes, Lord, but even the dogs can eat the crumbs flowing off of the table of the master. So he was like, oh, that's a pretty good answer for her. <clears throat> so he said, uh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. And her daughter was healed immediately. Now that was the end of the story. But obviously, she rode her own boat. She rode it gently, finally. She got four Marilys for those three rows. And her dream, her wish came true. Now, it doesn't say that Jesus healed the daughter. It doesn't say that she healed the daughter. He just says, as you wish. So think about that. Row your own boat and enjoy the rest of the week.
Touch of God, waiting for the touch of 